Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hasham Ali Khan. So already uh, so many problems we have completed on one way ANOVA and last video I have done one problem on two way ANOVA. How to make the calculations for two way ANOVA table and how to give the interpretation. I have explained in detail in the last video. So if you have joined now, you may not be able to understand. So if you want the perfect knowledge, watch the video from beginning. Go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject statistics for management. Watch the video on analysis of variance, first a theory video, then starting so many problems on one way ANOVA I have done. And last video I have completed one problem, that is problem number five on two way ANOVA. Now I am going to start the sixth problem. Also, before starting the problem, take a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problems. Take a screenshot of the solution of the sixth problem, then I'll explain all the points. Come on, see the sixth problem. The following represents the number of units of production per day turned out by five different workers using four different types of machines. So we are given the machines in columns and workers in rows. So it is asking you test whether the mean productivity is the same for different machines and secondly whether the five men differ with respect to mean productivity. So production is given by the machines and by the workers. The machine productivity is given in columns and workers production is given in the rows. right? And we are concerned in finding out whether significant difference in productivity among the machines and whether the, there is significant difference in the productivity among the workers. So two way and over. Because two factors we are considering, one factor is machine, the other factor is worker. We have to give the conclusion on both the factors. That's why we have to apply two-way ANOVA table. Now one point is there. The values are given big values, 44, 46, 36, 43, 38 like that. If we square all these values, the values will become much bigger. It requires more calculation. There's a possibility of committing the mistake. So we apply coding method in order to reduce the values so that our calculations will become simple and easily we get the value of f computed value of f there is no difference whether you take the same values or you apply coding method coding method usage is optional it depends on the student if you want you follow otherwise take the actual values but the difference if you use coding method your time will get reduced your efforts will get reduced that's the advantage so here, if you see all the values, all the values are surrounding 40. That means by seeing the values, we can say the average value is 40. Because some values are less than 40 and some values are more than 40. So we take a constant 40. Deduct all values, deduct the 40 value, deduct 40 from all the given values. Deduct the constant 40. So before making this table, write one sentence. In order to simplify the calculations, we are using coding method. Subtracting 40 from each of the given elements. Subtracting a common element 40 from each of the given elements. After writing that sentence, you draw this table. In examination also, you must specify if you are using coding method. Now, machines are A, B, C, D given in the problem in columns. Workers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 given in the problems. For our convenience, I am denoting machines A, B, C, D. I am writing C1, C2, C3, C4 so that it will be easier for our calculation. C1, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 3. Similarly, 5 rows are there R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Okay. Now use the coding method. First value A, the column A, 44, 44 minus 40, you will get 4. Then 46 minus 40, you will get 6. 
36 minus 40, you will get minus 4. Then 43 minus 40, you, th you get 3. 38 minus 40, you will get minus 2. So I have deducted 40 from the first column values. Similarly, second column, 38 minus 40, minus 2. 40 minus 40, 0. 36 minus 40, minus 4. 38 minus 40, minus 2. And 42 minus 40 is 2. Like this, I have deducted 40 from all the elements. We get this reduced values. Now we take the total of columns and total of rows. Summation C1, if you calculate, you are getting 7. Summation C2, minus 6. Summation C3, 38, minus 17. Rows, R1, summation R1, summation R2, R3, R4, R5. Total. Now you cross verify. If you commit the mistake, your mistake will be caught here. How? The total of rows and the total of columns must be equal. If you are not getting equal, that means you have committed some mistake, calculating mistake anywhere. So, 5 plus 21 minus 12 plus 0 plus 8, you are getting 22. Same 22 you should get if you add up the columns also. 7 minus 6 plus 38 minus 17, you are getting 22. So, column total and row total, you are getting 22. That means your calculations are absolutely right. Now, first step correction factor. CF. T whole square by N. T is how much? 22. 22 whole square divided by N. N stands for number of items in all the samples. So, how many rows are there? 5 rows. The 5 values. Number of columns are 4. 4 values. So, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. 5 4s are 20. So, N is equal to 20. So 22 whole square divided by 20, you are getting 24.2. This is the correction factor. Now, total sum of squares of all the items in all the samples. Total sum of squares of all the values in all the samples. So simply all these values should be squared and then minus correction factor. That is 4 square plus 6 square minus 4 whole square, 3 square, minus 2 whole square, then minus 2 square, 0 square, minus 4 square. All these values should be squared and minus correction factor. Correction factor is 24.2. So you are getting SST 549.8. We got SST. Now SSC. Sum of squares between samples in columns. Sum of squares between samples of columns, SSC. Summation C1 whole square by N1 plus summation C2 whole square by N2 plus summation C3 whole square by N3, summation C4 whole square by N4. Four columns are there. C1, C2, C3, C4. Right? Minus correction factor. So what is the C1 value? 7 whole square by N1. N1 is 5 items. You can see here in columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 values are there in every column. So all N1, N2, N3, 5. So 7 square by 5, 6 square by 5, 38 square by 5, 17 square by 5, minus 24 point. You will get 339.4 SSC. Now SSR. Sum of squares between samples in rows. SSR. Summation R1. How many rows are there? Five rows are there. Summation R1 whole square by N1 plus summation R2 whole square by N2 plus summation R3 whole square by N3 plus summation R4 whole square by N4 plus summation R5 whole square by N5 minus CF. Minus CF. Now N1, N2, N3, N4. How many values are there in each of the rows? This row. How many values are there in the rows? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4, 4 values are there in every row. So we'll take N1, 4, N2, 4, N3, 4, N4, 4, N4, N5, 4. So all values will take 4. So 5 square by 4, 21 square by 4, minus 12 square by 4, 0 square by 4, 8 square by 4, minus correction factor, 24.2. You'll get 144.3 is SSR. Lastly, sum of squares within samples, error, SSE, is equal to SST 
माइनस एस एस सी माइनस एस एस आर तो फाइव फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट एट माइनस थ्री थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट पॉइंट फोर माइनस वन फोर्टी फोर पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स टू सिक्स पॉइंट वन इज एस एस ई वी गॉट ऑल द वैल्यूज फॉर मेकिंग द टू वे एनोवा टेबल दिस इज अ टू वे सेम कॉलम व्हाट वी हैव प्रिपेयर्ड इन द लास्ट प्रॉब्लम आल्सो ओनली फिगर्स विल चेंज तो एस एस सी इज थर्टी थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट फोर C minus one. How many columns do we have? Four columns. So four minus one, three. MSC three thirty nine point four divided by three one thirteen point one three. Similarly, between rows SSR one forty four point three. R minus one. Five rows are there. Five rows. Five minus one, four. So MSR is equal to one forty four point three divided by four thirty six point zero seven five. Now within samples error SSE sixty six point one. Degree of freedom C minus one R minus one four minus one five minus one twelve. Now M S E, so sixty six point one divided by twelve will get five point five one. That's all. Now we can calculate the computed value of F for columns and for rows. F C, in a computed value of F for columns, M S C divided by M S E. So one thirteen point one three divided by five point five one, you get twenty point five three. 20.53 is the computed value of F for columns. Similarly for rows, F R. M S R divided by M S C. M S R is 36.075 divided by 5.51. 6.55 is the computed value of F for rows. So we have calculated two values. Now null and alternative hypothesis exactly same. Null hypothesis for columns and for rows. No, the mean productivity for for uh, machines A, B, C, and D are same. No significant difference. Four machines are there A, B, C, D. No significant difference in mean productivity among different machines A, B, C, D. Similarly for rows, the mean productivity for workers one, two, three, four, five are same. No significant difference. Five workers are there one, two, three, four, five. The mean productivity among the workers is same. No significant difference. Alternative hypothesis opposite. There is significant difference in the mean productivity among the different machines A, B, C, D, and there is significant difference in mean productivity among the different workers one, two, three, four, five. Or next level of significance, nothing is given. Alpha point zero five degree of freedom. Now two degree of freedom separately we have to take for columns and rows. For columns, degree of freedom. Degree of freedom v1 is three. Numerator, numerator is three. Denominator is twelve. MSE denominator. Numerator is MSC, and denominator is MSC. So MSC के लिए numerator degree of freedom three. MSE के लिए degree of freedom twelve. So v1 three, v2 twelve. For rows, the numerator is four. Denominator is twelve. So v1 is equal to four, v2 is equal to twelve. This is the Table. Uh, this is the degree of freedom. Now, critical region. Table value at five percent level of significance. Columns. Columns. Can you? V one is equal to three. V two is equal to twelve. Is three point four nine. So, if you refer the table, refer the F table which is given in the description. A link is given. Open the link. You will take a printout and keep it ready. This is the F table. In this F table, V one is equal to three. And V two is equal to twelve. You will find three point four nine. And secondly, V one is equal to four, and V one V two is equal to twelve. Three point two six. The two different values we are getting because the degree of freedom is different. Three point four nine for columns, three point two six for rows. Now we have to compare the computed value with the critical value for columns. It is twenty point five three computed value. And uh, critical value three point four nine. So twenty point five three is much higher than three point four nine. So it falls in rejection region. Columns machines. It falls in rejection region. Null hypothesis rejected. Similarly for rows. For rows, critical value is three point two six. Computed value is six point five five. Six point five five is greater than three point two six. Again, it falls in rejection region. There is significant difference in mean productivity among the workers. Rows are in workers. So ultimate conclusion, you can see here 
3.26, 3.49. From here onwards, rejection region. Our computed value are 20.53. It is in rejection region. And 6.55 in rejection region. So conclusion, the computed value of F for columns 20.53 and for rows 6.55 are greater than the critical value 3.49 and 3.26. So both falls in rejection region. Null hypothesis are rejected. There is significant difference in mean productivity between different machines and there is significant difference in mean productivity between different workers. That's it. This is the end of problem number 7. One more problem is left on this two-way ANOVA. That will do it in the next class and that will be the end of the topic analysis of variance.